This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high-quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP today to learn more about their history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP.com. And we thank Farm Bureau Health Plans for their great support of the OTP and the OT people. And it is draft day eve. <laughs> <laughs> here yes, we it are. Is. Rhett Bryan, Coach Mack here. Tomorrow, the draft, by the way, will be on Titans Radio. That's 104.5 in Nashville. Thursday night, tomorrow night, 6 to 10. Friday night, 6 to 9. And then Saturday afternoon, 4 to 6. So hopefully every Titans Radio station in the region will carry it. But we know 104.5 The Zone will. And uh, we invite you to join us for uh, for our draft coverage. How are you guys? Great. Making it? You know what? Hey. We're here. We've had a good build up to this. Let's go. Looking forward to it. Well, there's been a lot of talk about offensive line in this part of the world. So we have saved Coach Mack and Rhett Bryan's top five offensive linemen to today. Draft day eve. Rhett Bryan, please run down first the offensive tackles, your top five. Number five, Troy Fawatanu, Washington. Number four, Tally Fuaga, Oregon State. Number three, J.C. Latham, Alabama. Number two, Olu Fashanu, Penn State. And number one, Joe Alt, Notre Dame. All of these guys go in the first round. Yes. All five of these tackles go in the first round. Why is Joe Alt number one, Coach Mack? He's, he is – the most complete as far as technique-wise. Plus, he's a massive human. I mean, 6'9", 321, and he's a really good athlete for that size. It, 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 I, was, I was even more at the combine taken back by his movement in space. I mean, he ran a 505-40, a you know, for somebody that's 6'9", 321, 173, 10, 28-inch vertical jump, uh, 731 cone. He's got an 82 and three-quarter inch wingspan. That's 83. I mean, that's – Big. And he did 27 times on the bench. And he's Marvin Harrison Jr. of the tackle position. Thank you. In that, John Alt, who's in the Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame, Absolutely. is his dad. Absolutely. And so he's had all of that. Now, he wasn't an immediate offensive lineman in high school. He it's was a, a tight end story. and a quarterback. He was a tight end and a quarterback in high school. And then he moved to, once he went to Notre Dame, you know, I'm sure it crushed the people at Iowa when he didn't go to Iowa, you know, because it's, it's a legacy well, player. I'm not sure they recruited him because he was not until later yeah, you're right. a highly recruited player. He only weighed 257 pounds 100% right. at the end of his high school career. And, you know, it's funny because you talk about he starts off as a quarterback. He's like six feet, 210, and then he gets bigger and he's a linebacker. And then he's a tight, tight end. end. And then they finally move him to tackle, and and everybody's like, oh, he's going to go to Notre Dame, and he's going to redshirt. And he gained from the end of his high school football season to his graduation, he gained 25 pounds. So he goes to Notre Dame, and nobody thinks he's going to play. And then by October, he's their starting left tackle. I mean, he's still, still just, what, 21? He just young. turned 21. And Mike. To y'all's point, he's only been playing tackle for about four years. Yeah. Three of it in college. So not only is he super polished and ready to go, he's got room for growth to get even better. Offensive line coaches are going to love to get this guy because he's got everything. And plus, you know, what you hear, he's just a, the consummate worker and, and all of that stuff. He did everything at the combine, you know, was willing to go out and do everything. But there's technical aspects of his game. That we've got a we've got a guy that's employed here now by the Titans. That Isn't it Bill Callahan, the the best, the absolute best. And and whether Joe Alt is here or not, I mean, but the things that someone of of Bill Callahan's pedigree could do with this guy early on, because uh, Joe Alt still needs to be a, a little bit more, you know, with a punch rather than absorb. And you know, there's a lot of things, but there's so much there to work with. And to me. You don't get these kind of humans very often. There's been discussion about his height. 
because he's six eight and a half, mm-hmm. right? And some people have said, well, that's not an advantage, that that's a tough thing. And then I say, did you ever watch Jonathan Ogden play? <laughs> Come on. He's in the Hall of Fame. Um, do, do you worry about six eight and a half at all? No, you don't, you don't worry about it because he's got the reach. The thing you worry about with guys that are, that are not athletic, that are that tall, is they have a real tendency to be waist benders. Okay. In other words, to be able to get down. to the, but, but he does Now, he'll lean some. He'll lean some, but he's not really a waist bender. In other words, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, sure. He'll lean some you know, to reach, but he's not a waist bender. I, because of his athleticism, all these athletic numbers that I just put out to you, He's got enough ability, you know, to move his feet and to do those types of things. I don't worry about that. Yeah, it's, it's funny. When you talk about these athletes who keep growing until later in their teens and even into their 20s. Yeah. I mean, I think about basketball players. You get a guy who was six feet tall and played guard, and then all of a sudden he grows up to six seven, six eight, and yet he still has the skills that he did when he was six feet tall because he learned to play the game that way. This guy athletically is almost the same way as he's kept growing and progressing and all of the athletic skills he had when he started high school and he was a quarterback, he sort of continued on with and is building upon even now. Well, that's a great point. He didn't lose those skills no. because he gained he gained size. And, and again, there's still technical aspects of his game that the, the, the uh, offensive line coach in the National Football League is going to be able to refine. Uh, but yeah, all of that. Alt and Fashionu yeah. were the two guys that were right together. As a matter of fact, Fashionu was ahead of Alt early on in this process, but it's it's pretty much been thought it's Alt and then Fashionu. What's the difference in the Notre Dame tackle and the Penn State tackle? Fashionu is not quite as consistent. You know, he's not quite as consistent. I think I think Fashionu again, he's a really a good athlete too. When you watch look at those two guys, and I watched them pretty close. On just standing together on the floor, down there, there was there was there was there was three of them that were standing, uh, really four of them that were standing there on the floor together. That you went, whoa! Just this group of dudes in in Fashionu and J C Latham, and then we'll talk about this other guy later on, the guy Marius Mims from Georgia. I mean, these are big, big humans that have got athletic ability. But I think Joe Alt is just a little more consistent, Mike, with everything to do with playing offensive tackle. Latham. That is an enormous human being. What a load that dude is. What did he weigh, 345? 342. Yeah. Okay. Is he a right tackle, or can he play left tackle? Or he's never we... played left tackle. He's played, he's played some guard, mm-hmm. and he's played right tackle the whole time. And, again, to project somebody like that to left tackle is, I mean, as I said, Bill Callahan could tell you right away, yes or no. You know, I, But I, to me – when I was coaching, one of my draft picks when I was coaching at, 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 that, that compared to these huge human beings, I drafted Leonard Davis out of Texas. Big. Big. He was 370? Yeah, big. You know, six, six, seven and a half, six, eight. Big. His nickname was Big. Hmm. One of 23 children. Very original. Yeah, very original. I played with his brother at TCU, but he was massive. And we started him out at left tackle. He ended up his career – Going to the Pro Bowls and being All Pro as a guard with the Cowboys, you know. Once he so, but these types of big humans, you're going to find a place for. Fuaga, Rhett, we had a chance to see him. That's a nasty human as well, and plays that way. Oh yeah. Oh my. And uh, you know, six five and a half, three twenty four, massive bear like hands at ten and an eighth inch, uh, eighty one inch wing, violent hands, very physical. Um, some people show this guy is swinging to the inside as a guard, uh, played right tackle for three years for the Oregon state Beavers. Like the way this guy plays a lot. Fatanu from Washington. Is he a left tackle? Don't know. I don't know. Six, four, which is kind of, you know, kind of on the edge, you know, three seventeen. He's a really, really good technical player. Left tackle, possibly, but the thing with him, he, he has position versatility. He's moved up and down that right. line. He can go inside too. He's athletic as all get out, and he is very physical himself. But isn't it a lot of, style the of play. comparison of Tyler Guyton, who's another guy whose size is? I mean, gosh, I mean, we're talking about, you know, what is he six four three eleven or something? We're talking about him like he's small, but not 
what they the elite length and the things that you talk about when you when you discuss left tackles in this league. We had ten guys on our on our tackle list, Mike, nine or ten Rhett, that had an over eighty inch wingspan. Yeah. They're all condors. I mean that that that, that I've never I've never seen anything like it. And can move. So, I mean, the quality – we talked about the quality of receivers in this draft, the quality of offensive tackles in this draft. It's pretty special. Who is Jordan Morgan from Arizona, Rhett? Jordan Morgan is an offensive tackle uh, at Arizona, left tackle, played all his whole career there, 6'5", 3'11", hands 10 and 7 8 inches, yeah. 81 and 3 8 inch wing. Uh, saw him at the Senior Bowl. He's uh, an athletic kind of guy. Uh, there are f- uh, a lot of folks that also see him maybe being a guy that bumps inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw him at the Senior Bowl, and sometimes he'd get moved off of his base. Oh, yeah. So I think that's one of those that's, you know, film at 11. Let's see what happens. He needs more core strength, especially lower body strength, to me, just looking at him because he's 6'5", 3'11". You know, and three, he, needs, he needs more – Anchor. He needs more anchor. He needs more ballast to his body. Amarius Mims does it from Georgia. <laughs> um, well, this is this is one of the my, okay. This, this is this is the guy yeah. in in all of this yeah. that is so debated because give his official size if you would please six eight three forty, and he is all of both. I mean, and he, and, and and does and is not sloppy. No, I mean, this is a this is I mean thirty six and one eighth arm. 11 and a quarter hand. 86 and three quarter inch wing. Right. 80, I mean, you know, 11 and a quarter hand, that's a catcher's mitt. And a 507 40 at 340 pounds. This dude's the unicorn. And like Chop Robinson that we discussed in a previous OTP with Edge Pass Rushers, it's the same kind of thing. Eight career starts. Eight so career it's, starts. It's the unicorn in athletic traits and measurables, but the experience isn't always there. Yeah, it had some injury. And has injury right. issues. But when you when you look at them and you look and you see and you, you figure if if it continues to develop, I mean, how many six eight three hundred you know three hundred forty pound guys are there that can move? Well, he went to Georgia. I mean, they they're not recruiting just average guys right now, especially <laughs> there. Yeah, I mean, right right now, I mean, they're for all of the. Great defensive players, and for all of the quarterbacks and the receivers yep. and all of this, they're winning O line, D line right now dramatically. And that's life in the SEC, right? That's life in the SEC. Well, that's life to win the SEC. That's life to win the SEC. That's great right. point. So, where does Mims play in the league? What position does he play in the offensive line in the NFL? I think he's a right tackle. Okay. All right. So, I mean, we talked about a bunch of. I want some sleepers now. Rhett, give me your sleeper at the offensive tackle position. So this is a guy that I think would have more traction. He, he would still be probably a sleeper, but not uh, – this may be the first time anybody's ever heard this guy's name. He had, he had a torn quad to end his season, so he is coming back from all that. But his name is Karan Omegaji. He played in the Ivy League at Yale and all Ivy League. I mean, nice career. Uh, 14 games at left tackle, 10 at right guard. So he, there's some pers- uh, versatility there. 6'5", 323, hands 9 to 5 8, arms 36 and 1 8 inch, wing 85 and a half. He's one of those that he's going to be a developmental type of deal. He'll still be drafted probably in the mid-rounds just because of what he is. Um, and you, the concern, I think, is the jump from – the Ivy League to the NFL. Well, he's been blocking future lawyers and that's anesthesiologists. Correct. I mean, that's that's not, nothing wrong with those professions. No, not at all. Gosh, no. But they're I not mean, National League football, <laughs> National no, Football and, League and, players, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a different. He has not seen oh, no. the quality of athlete oh, that no. he is going to see at that particular position. position. Oh yeah. I, I mean, it's it's a it's a different beast. Well, it's it's just a different pool you're swimming in, now. right? But Literally he, and figuratively, literally, it is a yeah. different beast. Yeah. There's something to his feet. His body control is good. And the length is rare. But, you know, that's a position where a really smart guy, it really helps to be a really smart guy. Well, and those guys, if they, if they are smart and they've got some physical ability, can figure it out. When you're talking about offensive linemen, 
their lifespan normally is a little longer, and they get better as they get older. Sure do. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like you know cattle. You know, the older they are, the the bigger they get, and they learn how to work with the herd and move around, and that's what they are. I have no response to that. Well, that's because it's the truth. It's the truth, and that's why that's why other positions move when they walk by them on the practice field. This ah. has been the Farmers Minute on right. the OTP. Coach Mack, who is your sleeper at offensive tackle? This guy will be in the seventh round. Uh, Travis Glover from Georgia State. Okay. 6064, 317. Hand nine and three eighths, arm thirty five and a half. He's a five year starter, thirty two inch vertical jump, twenty three inch bench press. Played in the hula bowl and the senior bowl. He was there. He played right and left offensive tackle. Played left guard. Fifty nine games, fifty seven starts. Okay. Well, the Panthers have a pretty good program now. Uh, they too. do have two thousand three hundred ninety three snaps at left tackle, one thousand three hundred six snaps at right tackle, four hundred twenty six snaps at left guard. And you see him against North Carolina. You watch him against LSU. I mean, third day, keep that name in mind. Travis Glover, Georgia State. Okay, so you've said your top five, they're all going in the first round. Is there a real chance that we could have seven offensive tackles go in the first round? I think I think Mims okay. has got a chance to, go, a chance to go in the first round. I think Jordan Morgan. Okay. Has a chance to go the later part of the first round. And depending on who wants to jump up and get a developmental guy that's got a lot of skill set but just hadn't been doing it very long, Tyler Guyton. So it could be a record eight. Eight would be the record, record right? That's eight correct. Eight would be the record. It's got a chance. All right. So in day two, can you find a good tackle? Yes. In day three, will you be able to find a tackle that can help you? I, I think it falls off. Okay. I think, I, think, I think it falls off there. Wouldn't you agree, Rhett? I think it falls off. You'll still find somebody that can play it, but I think that, that – be a that, work in progress. Yeah, it's a work in progress. All right, let's go to the interior offensive lineman, center and guard, Rhett. You and Coach Mack have put together a top five. Please let us know who they are. At number five, Cooper Beebe, Kansas State. Number four, Christian Haynes, University of Connecticut. And number three is Zach Frazier, West Virginia. Number two, Graham Barton, Duke. And number one, Jackson Powers Johnson, Oregon. Jackson Powers Johnson is center in the NFL, Coach? He's a center in the NFL, and, and you said it very well. We've mixed the centers and the guards. When we put our board together, we separate centers and guards. And so there are some guys that, that would fall into kind of a different rank. But anyway, that, it, it, this is mixing these two as the interior offensive lineman. He's a center. Graham Barton from Ravenwood. Really good player at Duke. Left tackle for the majority of his time at Duke. He's projected as an interior player and a highly rated interior player. Is Graham a center? Well, they you know they did him some at the at the senior bowl at center. I think he's a guard. Okay, that's 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 just what I think. He's, I think he's a guard, but he's a good player. I like I like Graham Barton as a good player. Probably be a, an immediate starter in this league. All right. Let's go to some of your favorites outside of the top five. Coach Mack, your first favorite that you'd like to throw at us in the interior of the offensive line. Dominic Pooney from Kansas. Okay. Okay, offensive guard, 6'5", 313, uh, 5'3", 5 in the 40, 30-inch vertical jump, 8'11", 4'4", short shuttle. Again, 81 and three-quarter inch wing. I, I like this player, and especially where he's probably going to go in the draft. You know, probably – Second day, maybe down towards the end of the second day. I like this guy. And he's the guy who's played a lot of football, too. Played a lot he? of football. All right. Rhett, your favorite in the interior offensive line. Cedric Van Pran, Granger, Georgia. Top program, top play, center all the way. 44 consecutive starts to finish his career. 6'4", 298. Just, I, I think he's a value player for somebody uh, in night two of the NFL draft. A lot of people – in talking about him, say he's plug and play. You know, you just pick him and, and you just put him in and he's your center. And then there's been some comparison in one place I read that he was much like Lloyd Cushenberry was when he came out of LSU. Taller guy with good mm -hmm. size will continue, you know, gives you a little bit of an anchor in the middle or a lot more of an anchor in the middle, I should say. And he's just going to be a guy who helps you from the minute he walks in the building. I kind of believe that. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that. And, and he's Georgia. And he's Georgia. 
I knew you were going to say it, and what you're right. All right, let's get into sleepers. Coach Mack, do you have an interior offensive line sleeper? Frog. Oh, no, here we go. Frog. <laughs> Coleman. Brandon Coleman. Thank you, Mike. Yes. I knew you knew. Yes. 6'4", 313, 34 and 5 eighths arm, hand 10 and 3 and quarter, long, long wing, nearly 84-inch wing, 499, 40, 34-inch vertical jump for a man that size. He's going to be a guard in the league, 9'4", broad jump, and plus he's a frog. From Texas Christian. Red, do you have an interior offensive line sleeper that you'd like to share on the eve of the NFL draft? Yes. Yes. Uh, this guy is a mid-round guy, and I think when th this started out for him uh, several months ago, probably would have been late day three or maybe even a priority free agent, and it's Mason McCormick from South Dakota State. This guy tested off the charts at the NFL Combine, 6'4", 309, hands 10, wing almost 82 inches, 508, 40-yard dash at 309, not too shabby, 35-and-a-half-inch uh, vertical leap, tops amongst the group of offensive linemen invited to the Combine, which I think was about 70 guys. Better than expected athleticism, um, violent downhill-style play with this guy, I think that's a guy that could make somebody's uh, offensive line room very interesting with with uh, a probably early day three selection. Coach Mack, if you're going to take a center or a guard on day three, will you be able to find quality? Yes. I mean, there's a center I really like from Wisconsin named Tanner Bartolini. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think so. And Tanner Bartolini will probably be, be available on day three? Uh, maybe. 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 I mean, I, I love what we've done here all this week. This is really great. Probably none of it will happen. But, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's just totally devalued five days of the OTP. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, to me, that's what makes this draft so – the draft's interesting. Right. And when, you, when, you, when you're really in it, you know, as I was just deep into it, on the phones, it's, it's amazing the difference of opinions. Oh, and incredibly. That's, and that's what makes it so exciting. Feels like linebackers, running backs, and safeties fall because people get to their pick, say, in the third round, and they say, oh, gosh, this guy's here that we didn't expect. We just can't pass him up. Yes, we need a guard, but we get a chance to take wide receiver or tight end or flashy corner, you know, there you go, Mike. So and so, and that's the way it 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 starts to slide downhill. So well, and 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 really, just for a peek behind the curtain, that's why your board is set in your draft room vertically and horizontally, because once you start getting to the draft, and then you know, you know four, three or four picks before you, you start putting a bullpen up, and you put a bullpen up not just positionally vertically, you put a bullpen up horizontally too as the grades coincide with one another then you decide what you want good stuff seat geek is now the official ticketing partner of the tennessee titans whether you're buying or selling tickets to titans games or any live event in nashville seat geek is the place to do it seat geek the new official ticketing partner of the tennessee titans so titans fans can fan Oh, that is so well done. SeatGeek will be so happy. <laughs> we are so happy that the draft is here tomorrow night. We're on the air 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Time. Friday night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time. And then on Saturday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. 104.5 The Zone in Nashville. And a lot of our Titans radio partners throughout the region. It is going to be a lot of fun. Ramon Foster is going to join us. Amy Wells is going to join us. Friday night, Brent Hubs from On3's VolQuest.com will join us for the second straight year. He added so much. He was great. On Friday night really last good. year, really enjoyed yeah. all of the insight he provided, uh, having covered these guys through their recruiting process in college. Knew a lot of great tidbits and added a lot. So we're excited to have him. And we're excited to have you join us uh, for what is going to be a fantastic time. For Coach Mack and Rhett Bryant, thank you so much for the great job throughout the, the last five days of OTPs. Well, thank you for being the moderator and putting this together and putting up with us. For Titans Radio's Draft Do I, I'm Mike Keith. Happy Draft Eve. 
This is the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go. 